Next, we'll talk about designing functions. Functions are our primary mean of abstraction, and we want to use them in a particular way. So programming languages didn't always have functions. Originally, you just wrote lots and lots of statements, maybe with some go-to statements that told you what statements to execute next. But this idea of having pure functions with inputs and outputs wasn't always accepted as the right way to program, but now it universally is. It's just certainly the right thing to do. So characteristics of functions can help us describe what sort of function we're going to define. A function's domain is the set of all inputs it might possibly take as arguments. A function's range is the set of output values it might possibly return. And then when you think about a pure function's behavior, that's really the relationship it creates between input and output. So that's what it does. Not necessarily how it does it, but what it does. So it's a good idea to think about these three things when you're asked to define or implement a function. Let's look at a couple of examples. So we've defined a square function before, which returns x times x, given an argument x. And we also recently looked at the choose function, which returns the number of ways to choose d out of n items. So if you're given either of these and asked to implement it, you should think about the domain, the range, and its behavior. The domain of square is that x just has to be any number, real number. Whereas the domain of choose is much more restrictive. So n and d are meant to be positive integers, and n is greater than or equal to d. Otherwise, you can't choose d out of n items. A function's range is the set of output values it has, so square will always return a positive real number, whereas uh, choose will return a positive integer. So as you're defining it, you should make sure you're returning those things. And then the behavior is very similar to the doc string. So the behavior of square is to return uh, the square of the input, and the behavior of choose is to return the number of ways to choose d out of n items. So just think about these three properties. And then there are some other things you should think about when defining functions. So here's a little guide to the most important aspects of defining functions effectively. And the reason I say effectively is that there are lots of ways to define functions, but some of them are easier for other people to understand than others. And when you think about programming in general, programs should be written for other people to read and only incidentally to be executed by a computer. When you define functions, you're defining them in such a way that you structure your program so that people can understand it. So here are some tips. Give each function exactly one job. Decide what that function will do, its domain and range, and its behavior should all be well-defined and simple for its one task. Try not to repeat yourself. So the don't repeat yourself or dry principle says that behavior should be defined exactly once in your program. Implement a process, but execute it many times. And you should try to define functions generally so that you don't have a lot of different versions of the same thing. Instead, try to write just one function that does the job that you want to do. So as illustrations, scissors, are the kinds of model you want to think about when you're defining a function. They're really good at cutting stuff. That's their one job. A Swiss Army knife is good at doing lots of different things in lots of different ways. That's not a function. That's something else. Don't repeat yourself. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, defining functions generally. Well, here's all the different electrical outlets that I could find in the world. There are probably many more. But the point is that when the world went about defining how you plug a cord into the wall, they came up with a lot of different solutions that are largely incompatible with each other. And so the wall socket function in the world is not defined generally. It doesn't work with lots of different kinds of cords. And that's not something you want to aspire to. You'd much rather just have one solution to the problem and always use that.